Well, uh, Maurice, thank you so much for helping my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? So my name's Maurice Johnson. Um, I work for Hewlett Packard. I've been in Houston for the last probably 17 years. Um, I got a wife, um, three kids, one in dental school. Um, uh, the biggest thing, my big one of my biggest passion is is science, actually, and it's actually astronomy, right? So I would say that I personally watch about I, I don't know if I should say this out loud, but about four or five hours of of uh, space videos on YouTube probably every week, right? I'm just I'm just that much of an enthusiastic person when it comes to science, right, and astronomy. Uh, what are some of the most exciting things uh, that you've seen recently? Um, the, the, I, I forgot what year was, the, but the launch of the new telescope, right? Because I know that the, um, uh, the uh, what is it, the James Webb Telescope now, right? So that was one of my favorites. Um, I always like looking at because um, um, I, I went and actually bought a, a telescope myself, right? So, but my with my limited knowledge, I look at the stars, you know, whenever there's a a a a, a big happening there. And I love looking at eclipses. So whenever there's an eclipse, I, I, I tend to always try to follow that too. And I love NASA. Yay. Uh, do you plan to go see the eclipse in April? Yes, I do. I do. That, that's one of my um, upcoming events. I'm looking forward to it, right? So anything out there, geeky science, you're, you, you can probably find me doing it, right? I don't have the, the of course, I don't think I have the, the technical knowledge like you guys and, and the people at NASA, but I'll just, uh, just a regular uh, observer. I am all in it like full time. So yeah, that's one of my passions. Uh, you know, some of the people I, I talk to are like, why are we going back to the moon and uh, spending money on this? Uh, I was wondering what your, your thoughts would be on that. You know what, when, when you actually asked me about doing the video, I was actually embarrassed that I didn't know that it would, it had been so long since, since we've gone, right? And I was just amazed because you don't even think about it, right? With all the with all the scientific breakthroughs that are happening and all of the, the new launches and stuff like that. I was like, oh my God, we haven't been in that long. So I'm actually excited about it, right? I think it's I think it's way overdue, right? If, if it was up to me, of course, I don't have the budget, but of course, I will send people all the time. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. And I'm kind of glad that it's come to fruition. I know a lot of people out there are excited about it too, just like I am. I know uh, some people I've talked to are like, well, they're not going to the moon. Where are they going? So hmm. and it's definitely a difficult concept uh, to think about just going to low Earth orbit. Yeah, but it, I mean, any, 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 any time we can put people in orbit of any kind, I think it's a positive, right? I think there's so much knowledge that we haven't even attempted to try to 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 to, to get our hands around, right? Because it's such a vast opportunity. So so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um when you think about where all this might lead us, say if you look out two hundred years in the future, do you see humans living on other planets and like cities in space and these types of places? Or do you think we're still here on Earth, sort of making these little short trips. So you said in about two hundred years, right? I don't think years. so. Yeah, I don't think so in two hundred years because we still have to deal with the the distance problem, right? Um, I do know that there are there are habitable places that that the scientists say that that are possible, right? Um, I don't know possible and, and pragmatic of getting there are two totally different things to me, right? So I think within the next 200 years, no, no. But I think if you were to tell me if we were pressed and we we had a reason to like get out like right now, there was something impending, right? I think I think our scientists would find a, a final way to try to do whatever they can to try to get us as, as close as possible, right? So, yeah, but 200 years, probably not. But I, I mean, the, the moon's only like three days away. And while it's not habitable, we could uh, we could create facilities on the moon for people to live in, or you know, uh, create facilities uh, inside the moon. Um, how about that? That would that would be interesting, right? Because then we would have to understand what's happening on Earth while we would have to be on the moon, right? So then, what would the impacts of of just being on the moon itself? versus what's happening on because there would be a reason why we couldn't be on earth anymore right so then i would have concerns about if all of us would try to be on the moon so that that would be my biggest concern right that something would have had to have happened to earth in order for us to even be contemplating getting on the moon
Well, I mean, I think it'd be only a small percentage of people, uh, you know, those people that uh, just really liked uh, being in different places or like the view of Earth from the moon or um, mm -hmm. who went there for scientific or economic reasons in terms of maybe uh, space mining and manufacturing and tourism and that type of thing. So, well, um, I, I, will, I, I will say this, Nathan, that I have the, the, the trajectory of probably from Albert Einstein's days, right, of where we were, right, in terms of where we are now. We've made huge leaps and bounds. Right. So everything that it, it, it's like anything is exponential. Right. So you, you, I say that now, but in 15 years, there may be some other great discovery that's going to that's going to make it even more feasible for us to live. Right. So, you know, with, with science, that, that's one great thing about science is that it, it's it's going exponentially, which is always a great thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me kind of like the thought of. Uh, maybe the first people that try to go to another star, star go into uh, like a generation ship and it's like their great, 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 great grandchildren arrive there like 500 years later. Uh -huh. But by the time uh, they arrive, uh, somebody left 200 years later and gets there in uh, 200 years and beats them by uh, 100 years. And so, you know, they thought they were going to a completely empty place, but there's already a welcoming party <laughs> that's there. Yeah, you know, you know my favorite, my favorite movie, um, it's Interstellar, right? Okay. Yeah, so that that's my all time favorite movie. Don't ask, don't ask me how many past fifty times I've watched it, right? But that'll give you an idea how much of a big fan of 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 science that I am. So yeah. Um, what about that movie really attracts you to it? I like the fact that Kip Thorne was the person that was providing a lot of the science behind it, right? He's probably one of the most well respected astronomers out there in the world. Right. So just just having his knowledge and knowing that a lot of I think they were saying maybe like 60 to 70 percent of the movie actually had factual data behind it. Right. And he was mm -hmm. one of the, the leading scientists that helped uh, advise the movie. It just made made it all more. Of course, you had the Hollywood twist to it. Right. But just knowing that Kip Thorne was a part of it, that, that just made the movie even more credible and even more exciting for someone like me that 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 isn't as versed as you guys are with with astronomy. So. What do you think about like the the social aspect of that movie in the sense of, um, you know, there it happens in a era where um, nobody believes that we went to the moon and, you know, they think we should all go back to farming and, and stuff like that. Uh, do you see that as being a risk uh, with the way society is going? No, because I, I think for me, uh, the first, like, like you, when I was growing up, they said, hey, what's the one thing that you would need to find that there could be life on other planets, right? And it was like, well, we haven't found water, but we found water now, right? And so it, it just tells me that people will adjust to as the, not, I, I don't think that something is going to spring up on us that's going to make us panic or whatever, but I think the more you introduce science to people, right? and replace science with um, people that don't have like all of the factual data behind them to support their fears or whatever. I think it's always helpful. That that movie to me was kind of like a Hollywood twist to it, right? Because that left, it seemed like it left a gap between what happened to make people so fear and all they wanted to do was focus on their impending doom, right? Versus trying to actually go out there and, and, and reach into space. Because I do believe, I do believe that we should be looking looking more at what do they call it exoplanets? Is that what they call it? exoplanets, right? Mm -hmm. Or planets that look similar to Earth, right? So I I do think we should focus on that because you never know, right? And you never know what type of of, of beings are out there. Now I don't believe in little green men and all that kind of stuff like that, right? But I do believe that there are some elements of life that's out there. Um, if you had the opportunity, would you take a trip to space? Yes, I would in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, wouldn't even think twice about it, right? Yes, that 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 would be, of course, uh, on my ultimate ultimate uh, Maurice Johnson bucket list. But yes, I would. I would love to, right? And, and and congratulations to all the people that 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 do have the chance to 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 do that or have that experience. I uh, definitely. I'm uh, this coming Tuesday. There, NASA is graduating uh, the latest gra uh, class of astronauts. Okay. Uh, and so I'm uh, really excited. I, I actually be able to go to that and see kind of like the, the next uh, next crop 
our next class of uh, astronauts. So that's kind of kind of neat. But how far would you consider going? How far? I, uh -huh. I, I mean, I, I look at like I said, I watch science videos all the time on the on the universe. Right there, are, for me, Nathan, there is no place that I would not venture to go. Right, there there would not be a place. Right, because for me, it, it's for me, I always struggle between religion and science. Right. And for me, science is just one of those things that we're only on the tip. I won't even say the tip of the iceberg. Right. There's so much information that we don't know. There's so much exploring that 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 um, that that's going to be happening over the next one, 100, 500, the next thousand years in terms of science. It's just going to make all of this seems like it's just child's play. Right. So. It, it, uh, I don't. I don't think we un honestly. I don't think we even have the capacity to know as humans, as human beings, what is really out there, right? Because we can only observe what we can see, right? But I think the more science get there, I think the more we 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 kind of um, speed up the process in terms of getting from point A to point B in terms of time distance, right? Then I think that'll be a whole lot better for us to understand the science. But I think the biggest issue right now. Is the is the traveling part right? How long it takes to get to one place versus the other? So yeah. Um, what do you think? Are I mean, do you think you'll get a chance to travel to space in your lifetime? No, no, no. I, I only say it because it, it's been fifty years, right? <laughs> and it's still very expensive, right? So until those until those costs come down, right? It, uh, the regular person like me probably is not going to. To have that experience but you know what in actuality i'm fine with that right because it, everything's out there on the video right you, you can see all of the all of the science that 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 people are reporting for you to watch right so i'm, I'm content with that well if i if of course i would love to have a chance to do it but if i don't i don't feel bad about it because i know that eventually there will be opportunities for humans to go go on voyages like this so hey i'm all for it um what do you see as hey, uh, causing the cost to go down? Maybe government sharing, right? More, more government, more sharing, and more knowledge between the different governments, right? Making it a top priority. And um, you know, the, of course, I don't know the exact components of. I think fuel costs is a, a is a big one, right? So maybe finding a, another alternative fuel cost. Uh, it's just, it's just. I, I don't think we we're there yet to bring those costs down, right? Not when it's not when it costs that much money. I don't even know what this project um, is, right, in terms of how much it's going to cost us to, uh, to travel. But, you know, those components have to come down to something that, that's real. It, it has to be either a breakthrough or some type of alternative way, alternative way of, of doing it. So. Uh, what if it costs, like, $500,000 to take a trip to Mars? $500,000? Um, you know, I, I I would have to go out there and be looking for some sponsors that that's not above me to go and, and uh say, hey, what about me? I, I can I can probably make you a very good argument on why I should be one that wants to go, right? So I have to go and find some kind of rich benefactor to 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 get me there. But five hundred thousand dollars is not reasonable, right? In terms of not not that I have five hundred thousand dollars, but I I think I can go out there and solicit and get about five hundred thousand dollars from some from some people. So yeah. Yeah, I was at a, a space conference. I think it was 2016, mm -hmm. uh, and Elon Musk was talking about uh, maybe it was 2018 uh, about um, you know uh, colonizing Mars and about how he was thinking that that's about the the right price point you would need to get to because um, that's sort of like if a, a you know the, the the average middle class family in the U.S. like liquidating everything uh, could probably get close to that point. Um, uh, you know, if it's like higher than that, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to um, get many people that could afford to go. And uh, getting lower than that is um, ideal, but uh, you know, it becomes less and less practical as you know you get lower. So uh, I, 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 think for, I think for a lot of people. I think for a lot of people, right, it's out of sight, out of mind. So they can't relate to the benefits of, of science and NASA itself, right? So that, that's that's an issue, right? But I think in terms of like, I mean, because I always go back to Albert Einstein again, right? 
I mean, just look at the the the, the breakthrough that he have, and now we have GPS positioning and and all that kind of stuff. And now we got cell phones and all that stuff, right? Just because of some of the work that he's done with, um, you know, like um, uh, special special relative and general relative. We wouldn't have had that stuff if it wasn't for science, right? So a lot of the things that we're benefiting now are from guys like you and from guys like the scientists out there. So, you know, the more, the more we invest in science, it's going to eventually impact the everyday person and make our lives much better. Well, that's awesome. Well, uh, Maurice, that's pretty much all the questions I had for you. Uh, did you have any questions for me or anything else that you thought would be good uh, to kind of make part of this interview for people looking back on uh, what I think is going to be a historic decade? Yeah, just make sure you record record everything for us and, and send it back and let us watch it. So we'll be trying to watch on our end, too. But, you know, you'll probably be more in into the know than we are. Right. So just keep us updated. We'll, we'll be Surely be happy. And thank you. Thank you for uh, giving me a time to uh, interview with you, too. I really appreciate it. Well, Maurice, I hope you have a good rest of your day and a good weekend. Thank you, Nathan. You, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.